You are surrounded by heroes of the faith. They're overseas in persecuted countries, and they have life-changing spiritual insights to share with you. Welcome to Into the Deep, a podcast with Jeff King, president of International Christian Concern. Well, welcome back to Into the Deep. We're going to continue the conversation today, and we're going to explore a couple things. And some of those, for instance, are why is the BJP so threatened with Christianity? What is that? The explanation is just amazing. It'll give you a lot of insight into what's going on. And then we're going to just talk about the spiritual side of things. And why is the gospel so appealing to so many in India? The answers to those questions are mind-blowing, and you've got to get hold of them. It'll really shape your view of what's going on in India. Um, let's talk about, we, we've covered some of this, I think, maybe maybe all of it, let's see. But I just want to talk about what, what is driving, what's the mindset behind the hatred? Um, let me just throw that out to you. I've got some of my own ideas. I want to see what you, what you answer. Yeah, I mean, the big driver behind Christian persecution in India is Hindu nationalism. And, and what we've seen in recent years, or since, especially since 2014, when Modi and the BJP power, power came into power, the central government, is not only the toleration of Hindu nationalism, but the swing of Hindu nationalism into the more extreme wings of it. And when when I first kind of came on board and was, was taking care of India and watching over, you have this continuum of, of Hindu nationalism where Hindu nationalism, excuse me, where it can exist like India is the homeland of Hinduism. It holds yes. a part of the culture and it should be respected in some way. They're one and the same. They're so intricately linked. It's not even linked. They're they're fused. To be Indian is to be Hindu. To be Hindu is to be Indian. Anything else is uh, an invasion. Uh, 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 it, it's a virus. And keep going, though. Well, definitely. And that's that's the extreme view that you're seeing even more normalized now that, if speaking specifically to Christianity, Christianity is a foreign religion that must yeah. be pushed out of the country. That yeah. is a narrative that is widely accepted within these Hindu nationalist circles. Yeah. In addition to that, all Christians who exist in the country were at some point their ancestors or they themselves were duped, forced, or tricked yeah. into converting to Christianity. So they, you know, we have to do something to stop one, stop that from happening, but two, have other sorts of policies that quote unquote bring these people back. Yes. And what we've seen kind of growing since 2014, which is is kind of laughable when you compare it to the accusations against the Christians. Yeah. Is you have these programs called Garlopsy. And what that translates to is homecoming. It is literally intimidation tactics or in, in some cases monetary um, monetary gifts that are given to Christians and Muslims for them to re- quote unquote return to Hinduism. Now what I've I've seen Hindu nationalist leaders go around to villages saying you're going to be kicked out of the village unless you convert back to Hinduism and join our Garlopsy yeah. program. Yeah. If a Christian says you could face eternal damnation if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, that is considered a forced conversion. But on the other hand, yes, <laughs> Hindu radicals can go in and say you're going to be kicked out of the village unless you convert back to Hinduism. So one is seen as not a forced conversion and the other one is seen as a conversion. The other thing that I found very strange and Christians are widely accused of paying for conversions. Hindu nationalist leaders will literally put advertisements in the paper saying it's going to cost X number of rupees to convert a Christian. It's going to cost X number of rupees to convert a Muslim back to Hinduism. (laughs) If a Christian were to publish anything like that, not even in a Hindi newspaper, but on a website, you bet. Oh my gosh. they would be arrested immediately. The way that people get around this is, is again, it, it reveals the intent behind these anti-conversion laws. Yeah. Returning to your yeah. traditional mother religion, religion yeah. is not considered, and this is explicitly in the laws, right. it's not considered a conversion. Yeah, convenient. It's considered a reconversion. <laughs> okay. You talk to a Christian in, in India who's grown up as a Christian, his father was a Christian, his grandfather was a Christian, they wouldn't see it that way. That's right. But the intolerance is getting to such a point. Yeah. And the national narrative is getting to such a point that that's yeah. being widely accepted. And now 
because you're this marginalized, scary, mm-hmm. you know, an- what the word that's used is anti-national element, we can do whatever we want to you. And that's unfortunately what we're seeing in India. It's just so similar to Marxist societies. It's just crazy. You're, you're an enemy of the state. You're anti-nationalist, you know. Um, but it's just kind of human thinking. It's just, it's group think. And um, so, and, and, you know, we're going to jump more into the political, but before there, I want to go just to touch on, I mean, what we're talking about, it's, it's pervasive, it's spreading uh, in the culture. But I know, I'm trying to think what, what year this was. I mean, this was over a decade ago, I went to India. And this wasn't like research. I mean, I went and picked up a paper and I can't remember which one it was, but it was one of the big ones. Um, and there were images there of, you know, uh, uh, caricatures or cartoons of Mother India, pure Mother India being molested, being raped by Muslims, be the foreign invaders, Christians, you know, etc. I mean, just poisonous propaganda stuff. Um, any comment on that? Yeah, I mean, the, the unfortunate truth is that that's not only continuing, but is growing. Yeah. The the narrative that Christians and Muslims are foreigners who are anti nationals who don't deserve full rights in the yeah. in the country and these abuses that are happening to them are okay because of those reasons. That's growing and a lot of that's growing is because of the toleration. Well, I mean there's two two issues, I guess. One is the toleration of hate speech. Not yeah. only the toleration of hate speech, yep. but the promotion of hate speech. Like yep. we're not modeling we're not of just, it. Well, yeah. modeling of it, the toleration of it, and people who engage in it being promoted in the government. Yeah. So it's, it's not even like a, I think in, in U.S. politics, like if we compared it to that, you know, you, if you said something a little off color in the past, you're quickly deleting all your tweets, you're, you're trying to hide what happened because <laughs> you, you're afraid that someday yes. you're going to get like, yes, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. India, you flip, flip, the, flip the narrative. You get rewarded. <laughs> you want that to be out there. So it, it's not like they're shying away from the spotlight. Yes. They're fighting for the spotlight. Yes. Look at me. I did this, you know, persecution incident against this group. Or look at me. I said this statement. I mean, there was a, I'm trying to remember, a politician several years ago that was trying to mandate uh, the practice of yoga to be something that all people had to participate with in school. Now, here in the West, we don't view it as as very offensive. Like the spirit, the connection between the spiritual and the exercise. We view it as a physical thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In India, it is viewed as a spiritual activity. It would the, the 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 term that I usually give, or the comparison I give, would be like if you were forced to bow to Mecca as a you know, an ec- a calisthenic exercise, or mm-hmm. you are forced to kneel before a cross as a calisthenic yeah. exercise. Yeah. That's how the Indian Christian views it. There was a politician who was trying to make this mandatory in schools, and he okay. said, quote, he said, folks who, or people who don't want to do this can go into the sea and die because they're not part, of, they okay. shouldn't be part of India. That's right. So again, it goes to this narrative of, if you're going to be Indian or if you're going to be Hindu or if you're going to be in this country, a citizen of this country, you have to be Hindu and follow these things. Otherwise, you can frankly go die. Yeah, you're a dirty, vile foreigner and uh, bringing a virus in, even though you people have been there for a thousand years. Your religion has been there. Christianity has been there for, you know, since the beginning. Um, and just before, OK, we I swear we're going to jump into the political or even more so. We're going to go to the top of the food chain in the political. But before we do that, I just want to talk about the caste system and how this plays in. So who who is the majority of uh, those coming to Christ? And then who would not like that? Yeah, the estimates are the, the Christian community, about 80 percent of Christians come from a low caste or scheduled caste, which is the lowest of the low background. Is scheduled now, caste, is that tribal or is tribal even outside? Tribal is different. Tribal is okay. completely different. You have the caste system itself, which you have the bottom caste, and then below that you have the Dalits, who are people outside of the caste, or the, the, the folks that are called the trampled upon, essentially. That's what Dalit means. Formerly untouchables? Formerly untouchables, absolutely. Yeah. So it's these people who, by their the tradition of their own culture and, and religion, have been told they're spiritually impure. And that's 
like untouchability revolves around the idea that you as a person somehow are spiritually so impure that you can't be touched. You can only do the jobs that are, are spiritually polluting jobs because you're already dirty. Mm-hmm. There's in, in, in some villages and some laws of Manu, which are everything that, that kind of encapsulates the caste system itself, a Dalit should not look at or look in the eye of a person from the Brahmin caste because somehow that would pollute their spirituality. That's that's the level of kind of disdain or you know other uh, Abdallah is held at. And obviously people who have lived in this system of oppression for millennium, yeah. when they hear something from the gospel that says all man is created equal and God, like God loves them and Jesus loved them so much that he died on a cross for them. Yeah, yeah. That is a radically life-changing message for them to hear because their religion has told them that they are dirty, that they are bad, and that they need the only way out of this this caste essentially is to accept their dharma, yes. which is like you just need to accept this oppression because the only way out of this oppression is to accept the oppression. It's punishment. You need to live out your fate and you know, 100 more lifetimes, 1,000 more lifetimes like this, and you can move up. Yeah. Exactly. And so that that message of equality, that message of, you know, God loving them, frankly speaking, mm. is so dangerous Gosh. that you that I mean, it's no surprise that 80 percent of Christians come from that. Wow. Background. Wow. But then the problem that you have there is the pyramid of the caste system is affected, because if you have the lowest caste people who are doing the spiritually polluting jobs, who are the ones that are oppressed in order for the folks in the upper caste to exist, then the caste system doesn't work. So you need to find a way to make sure these people at the bottom are not leaving that system of oppression. So we enact laws like the anti-conversion laws to make sure people don't don't convert. We create exceptions for reconversions to make sure we can bring them back in without stopping it. Or we create the whole schedule cast benefits which is like an affirmative action policy in india yeah to be dependent upon but they keep them in place yes 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 dalit christians and dalit muslims cannot receive schedule cast benefits which could be a job a school say that say that more plainly that's a little expert language there sure so schedule cast like just to, to kind of break that out these are government benefits that can be as complicated as the university like a university position or a position of jobs could be as simple as a food allotment on a monthly basis from the local government yeah this is given to low caste communities or people from traditionally low caste communities with the idea of helping them economically advance because of the millennium of oppression that they yeah they've gone through right however these benefits are only allowed to be accessed by dalit hindus Dalit Buddhists and Dalit Sikhs. Muslims and Christians are not allowed to receive these scheduled caste benefits, and it is purely on the basis of religion. And the so, if a, so if an untouchable comes to Christ and truly wants to convert and publicly convert, they have to say, in spite of the thousand years of oppression this culture has visited upon me, I can't get any benefits. Exactly. And and the courts in India have found that because they are now in a religion that doesn't have the caste system as part of it, they've suddenly left the caste system and all that oppression that is le- the structured oppression that is left there is no longer a thing, which is frankly laughable because, you know, our, our staff, because we work with the Christian community over in India, they come from low caste backgrounds and they are educated people. They are wonderful people the caste system still exists for them. I have seen people refuse to take money out of the hand of our university educated staff member. They make him put it on the counter and then they brush it into a a bowl where it can be washed before they touch it because they assume him to be spiritually impure because it comes from a low caste background. So the idea that- And this is mostly skin color? Is it features or skin color? What is it? Name, skin color, okay, where yes. you live in the village. It's a whole package. It's, yeah. it's everything. It's so yeah, yeah. pervasive, it's everything. Wow. So the idea that suddenly, you know, I've converted to Christianity or mm. because I don't believe in the caste system, the caste system no longer has an effect on my life. 
Wow. Is laughable. And there are yeah. challenges to that in the Supreme Court right now in India. Yeah, yeah. And I think the Supreme Court is going to hear that challenge in the next month or so that it's scheduled to be heard, which is huge. If they were to say no scheduled caste benefits can be held or can be received by all and you can't make a religious exception for it, I would guess you could see a lot of Christians and Muslims who have been closeted for years because of yes. the loss of, of rights and benefits would be able to come out and officially converse. So that's that's just another way there's structured oppression yes. in the South, the Christian community and the Muslim community from growing. Yeah, I, and I often think about the old old South or the days of uh, beyond segregation, days of slavery. So imagine uh, Christianity only existed among the slaves and the owners of those slaves, how would they react when they find out that this religion is teaching them that these people should be free, that there is, there, that slavery is absolutely wrong and the system is broken and they're evil in fact. Well, you know, back in the day, the whole culture up and down was Christian. So if you can imagine if it was just, just the slaves who were Christian, it was spreading wildly and people were understanding that they were free, how popular that would have been, oh my gosh. So that's, that's the mentality. That's what's going on. All right. Well, thanks for listening today. We are going to be back for a part three on this series in India, and we're going to focus much more on Modi and the BJP. So come back and we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to Into the Deep, the Persecution Podcast. Check out our website, www.persecution.org, for more breaking news about the persecuted church and resources to serve your persecuted family. Head into the deep and be transformed by the persecuted as we have.